The James Webb Space Telescope can look so far into the universe that it's essentially looking back in time, witnessing moments from billions of years ago when the universe was dramatically different. Webb can see galaxies that existed over 13 billion years ago, when the universe was in its infancy. The universe is about 13.8 billion years old. The light from the most distant galaxies we observe today started its journey not long after the Big Bang. Initially, this light might have been in the ultraviolet or visible spectrum, highly energetic but not quite at the X-ray or gamma ray level. As this light travels vast distances across the expanding universe, it undergoes redshift, stretching from visible wavelengths into infrared and even longer wavelengths as it loses energy over time. Think of it this way. Imagine the universe is a giant balloon. When you blow up the balloon, the dots on its surface move farther apart. Similarly, as the universe expands, the light from distant galaxies stretches and shifts towards red. The greater the distance, the more redshift we see. Webb is specially designed to detect this redshifted light. Its near-infrared camera, or NIRCAM, can pick up infrared light that's invisible to the human eye. This allows us to see these ancient galaxies as they were just a few hundred million years after the universe began. Unlike visible light, which can be blocked by dust and gas, infrared light can pass through these obstacles, revealing objects that were previously hidden from view. This allows Webb to see galaxies like Jade's GS Z14-0, which existed when the universe was only about 290 million years old. Observed at a redshift of about 14.32, this is the most distant galaxy ever seen to date. The light we see from this galaxy has journeyed through the cosmos for over 13 billion years, traveling across unfathomable distances to finally reach the Webb Telescope and conclude its epic voyage. This galaxy existed at a time when the universe was just 3% of its current age. By observing these ancient objects, we get a snapshot of what the cosmos was like shortly after its formation and how the first structures in the universe formed and evolved over time. For example, here's a comparison of the same region of space, the Pillars of Creation, taken by the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Space Telescope. Hubble, which primarily captures visible light, gives us a beautiful, albeit limited view. Webb, on the other hand, reveals a whole new level of detail, uncovering stars and galaxies hidden in the dust. To achieve this, Webb relies on its massive sun shield, which keeps its instruments extremely cold, around negative 370 degrees Fahrenheit. This is crucial because even the slightest heat can interfere with the detection of faint infrared light. So, Webb's sun shield ensures that its instruments can capture the faintest signals from the earliest galaxies. But such observations are not just about seeing distant galaxies. They're about understanding how these galaxies formed and evolved in the early universe. One of the most fascinating aspects of early galaxies is their rapid star formation. Early galaxies like GNZ11 and Maisie's galaxy are in what's called a starburst phase, where new stars are being formed at an astonishing rate. This intense period of star formation makes these galaxies incredibly bright and energetic. Since Webb can see through the dust and gas that obscure these regions, it can reveal the processes that drive this rapid star formation. There are three main populations of stars, categorized based on their metallicity, the abundance of elements heavier than hydrogen and helium, and their formation period in the universe's history. Population 1 stars are the youngest with the highest metallicity. They are found in the spiral arms of galaxies like our Sun and have a wide range of ages but generally formed after the galaxy had already enriched itself with heavier elements through successive generations of stars. Population 2 stars are older stars with lower metallicity compared to Population 1. They are found in the halo of galaxies, in globular clusters, and in the bulge of galaxies. Population 2 stars formed earlier in the universe's history when the interstellar medium had fewer heavy elements. And finally, Population 2 stars are the hypothetical first generation of stars, with no metallicity composed almost entirely of hydrogen and helium. They formed from primordial gas soon after the Big Bang, 
and are thought to be very massive and short-lived. Although they've not been directly observed, their existence is inferred from theoretical models and their impact on subsequent star formation and the evolution of the universe. One of the key discoveries Webb aims to make is finding Population 3 stars, which formed right after the Big Bang. By observing the earliest objects in the universe, Webb is helping us piece together how the cosmos transformed from a hot, dense state to the complex, structured universe we see today. Shortly after the Big Bang, the universe was a hot, dense plasma of particles. As it expanded and cooled, the first atoms formed, and eventually, gravity pulled these atoms together to form the first stars and galaxies. As these first stars died in supernova explosions, they spread these heavier elements throughout the universe, seeding the next generations of stars and galaxies. Webb's deep field images reveal how these early galaxies merged and evolved into larger structures, giving us a detailed picture of the universe's growth over billions of years. These structures are the result of billions of years of gravitational interactions, starting from tiny fluctuations in the density of the early universe. By mapping these structures, Webb provides crucial data on how matter in the universe is distributed and how it has evolved over time. And also, by observing galaxies at different distances, Webb effectively looks back in time, capturing different stages in the universe's evolution. But there's another mystery that Webb is helping us solve, the existence of supermassive black holes in these early galaxies. Take GNZ11 galaxy, for example. Webb has provided clear evidence that this galaxy hosts a supermassive black hole at its center. This black hole is actively accreting matter, meaning it's pulling in gas and dust at an incredible rate. This process generates enormous amounts of energy, making the galaxy exceptionally luminous. Webb's infrared capabilities allow it to detect the dense gas and high-velocity winds associated with these black holes. In GNZ11, astronomers observe signs of ionized chemical elements typically found near accreting supermassive black holes. These observations provide the first clear signatures that GNZ11 hosts a rapidly growing black hole. What's remarkable is that these supermassive black holes existed when the universe was very young, helping us learn more about how such massive objects could form and grow so quickly. In modern galaxies, supermassive black holes are usually surrounded by older stars and more developed structures, but in early galaxies, they're surrounded by young, hot stars and intense activity. There are several theories about how these supermassive black holes formed so early in the universe. One possibility is that they grew from the remnants of the first massive stars, known as Population 3 stars. Another theory suggests they formed from the direct collapse of massive clouds of gas. Webb's observations are crucial for testing these theories and refining our understanding of black hole formation. Supermassive black holes don't just sit quietly at the centers of galaxies. They have a profound impact on their surroundings. The energy they release can drive powerful winds that shape the formation of stars and the evolution of the galaxy. By studying these black holes in the early universe, Webb helps us understand how they influence the growth and development of their host galaxies. Webb's success is also paving the way for future missions. Its groundbreaking discoveries are inspiring new telescopes and missions that will build on its work, aiming to answer even more questions about the universe. These future projects will continue to expand our understanding using the foundation that Webb has laid. Don't forget to watch the video on the right and subscribe. Thanks for being part of Cosmonology.